<laughs> Robbers break into bedroom, child on runaway dog sled. It's called 911 Yellow Cab Runaway Dog Sled. This program contains true stories of rescues. All of the 911 calls you will hear are real. Whenever possible, the actual people involved have helped us reconstruct the events as they happened. Doris Hart had lived in the same house in the suburbs of Indianapolis, Indiana for 12 years. And each day usually began with the same comfortable routine. But on the morning of March 28, 1991, their lives took an unexpected and shocking turn. Approximately 7.10 in the morning, Mrs. Hart was upstairs in the shower. Dave doesn't live here anymore. He had a cap on and said police. Uh, think I could use the phone? Sure, come on in. No uh, problem.
from here. Ram contains true stories of rescues. All of the 911 calls you will hear are real. Whenever possible, the actual people involved have helped us reconstruct the events as they happened. Bob and Doris Hart had lived in the same house in the suburbs of Indianapolis, Indiana for 12 years. Each day usually began with the same comfortable routine. But on the morning of March 28, 1991, their lives took an unexpected and shocking turn. Approximately 7.10 in the morning, Mrs. Hart was upstairs in the shower. Second Street on Meridian. Dispatch hit me back again and said uh, that they just received a panic alarm from that same residence. At that time, I shut down all my siren and my red lights, and I started looking for numbers on the mailbox. Here. You can be killed in a car crash just as easy as you can be shot. 
I was scared, scared to death. suspect was being positively identified, the search for the second suspect intensified. The Indianapolis police were also alerted to be on the lookout for the suspect. <laughs> Sheriff's Department canine units combed the neighborhood where the suspect had last been seen. A radio traffic reporter heard about the search on his scanner and broadcast a description of the man. drug coverage the medicare benefits and questions line is now open 44-800-908-5644 from music city nashville tennessee johnny cash is all new this week with special guests conway twitty and hank williams jr as much as i love you this sunday at 10 p.m eastern on get tv I was just kind of standing there observing because I was rather anxious to find out if this was the one that jumped from the car from us. Dispatcher O'Day immediately called the yellow cab company. Yeah, I can. Uh, this is Murray County. I need to find out where your cab 518 is going. Okay, 
Apparently he had a car phone. They got the number of his car phone, and then I in turn called the cabbie. the city converged on the area, including Officer Ron Brzezik. I noticed a cab coming towards me. It's headed southbound on Washington Boulevard. I thought it was probably the cab. Somebody stopping you? Both of you put your hands up where I can see them. In the back of my mind, I was thinking it could be either one of them. I didn't put it past the suspect to have switched seats with the driver. I looked at the driver. He didn't fit the basic description as well as the passenger did. Uh, Bernard Lewis was driving cab 518 that day. So I heard him kind of whimper in the back on a low voice. That's all I had to get out from the gun. I heard him say something like, who, me? Man 128 control, we have apprehension of the subject in the old cab. Right. Yes. <laughs> Anytime you get a pursuit and you're a dispatcher, it, your adrenaline just flows. And anytime you can make up an that's just more or less icing on the cake. Bernard Lewis was driving cab 518. We put in an intercom system, and unless we know you, you do not get the door open. Do we ask you who you are and what your business is? But it does give you second thoughts of probably about everything that you do. I don't know. I just have all the praise in the world for 911 now because, you know, they, I feel like they have enriched our lives because if they hadn't have been here, well, I was scared that I was going to be killed. That's what I was afraid of. This is a proven fact. With this case, 911 works. You know, use it. We will be more than glad to help you. Next, I yelled my command stop when they, as soon as they took off, but they would not stop. I knew that without help, there was no way in the world that I could find my little girl. Meet Melanie, the hopeless romantic. He's a plumber. Oh, right, right. It destroys your system. Alexa, tell Frontpoint to arm my security system. In assets, we believe millions will be set as... Her old daughter, Ashley, for a ride on the family's docks. Um, now. <laughs> on Christmas Eve of 1991 in North Pole, Alaska, Rick Bourne decided to take his three-year-old daughter, Ashley, for a ride on the family's dock sled, as they've done so many times in the past. He had no idea that this time would be so different. Okay, Ashton, I want you to be really careful, okay? And listen to what Daddy says. My husband loves dog sledding. He is just a fanatic. You're going to be a good girl and be careful. I get a little paranoid about him taking Ashley out. So there's too many things that could happen. On that afternoon, it was five degrees below zero. I get these dogs hooked up, we'll go mushing today. Normally, I'd anchor the dogs off when I hook them up, so if they ever decide to take off, they're anchored down. But the dogs have always set in their spot, so that day I decided not to use it. Uh -oh. 
usually when they hook up the team, it usually goes fairly smooth. But that day, for some reason, they were a little jitterish. I should have picked up on that. Stop! Stop! I yelled my command stop when they, as soon as they took off, stop. but they would not stop. I just watched the sled pull away from me. I could hear Ashley screaming the whole time. She was yelling at the dogs to stop, and then she was yelling for her daddy to help, and I just felt so helpless. Being as cold as it was, my hair froze and my face froze. Rick kept searching without finding any sign of the sled. More than 30 minutes went by. The thought of her dying ran through my mind. It was a horrifying thought, but they were heading down in an area where there were so many different trails that it just go for so many miles. I knew that without help, there was no way in the world that I could find my little girl. Sean Aldrich and Brett Lewis, two off-duty medics, happened to be snowmobiling in the area that day. We got down the trail about approximately two miles. This man comes running straight at me. found within an hour to an hour and a half or so, the girl could have died. Potential takes its toll real quick. We were doing speeds about 72 to 75 miles an hour because up here, the sun dumps real quick. And once that happens, there's no light at all. The first sign we saw of Ashley was a sleeping bag. The first thing that came to my mind was, oh my God, she's dead, because the sleeping bag was not moving. But there was nothing in the sleeping bag. And uh, at that point, I really didn't know what to think, but that she was gonna you know, freeze to death. When it's that cold, you don't just start getting cold and you feel numb. The coldness bites into you, you can feel it just biting you. It's like a burn, it really hurts. I knew Ashley had been hurting really bad at that time. I was behind Brett, and I saw the little girl waving her arms. It was a great relief to see Ashley, that I just wanted to hold her. And then the next thing that was through my mind was, well, let's see how much damage we have here. Are you okay, Ashley? Are you okay? You're cold? When I first got to the little girl, she was as cold as a popsicle. Her hands were pretty cold, and her arms were shaking in the air. It was hard to tell if she was shivering at that point because she was so excited about seeing her father. Um, okay. I made a quick assessment of the little girl's injuries and I did notice frostbite on her uh, her cheek and it looked like she might have had some on her on her hands. Yeah. They rushed Ashley back to where Rick had left his truck and he took her home. Brett decided to search for the missing team of dogs. I found a trail that turned off the right, another trail, and I got onto it, and uh, it dumped right out onto the railroad tracks. And I looked down the tracks, and uh, the dogs were running down the side of the tracks. I tried to get my snow machine up alongside of them because they're running too fast for me to jump off and catch them. Finally, I got one hand on the sled and jumped from my snow machine, and the dogs felt the weight of me and uh, slowed them down, and they stopped. Helping me find my daughter was a top priority. Helping me track down my dog team was beyond what you would expect from a normal person. All right, thanks a lot. 
I don't feel I'm a hero. I, I do feel that it was fortunate that, that Brett and myself happened to be in the area. Well, I couldn't have made it without you guys. It's you guys' help. The main thing was that Ashley was okay, and uh, it was a pretty good Christmas present. Hey. Hey. Three-year-old Ashley Bourne did suffer some frostbite, but within a week, it was completely healed. In the tiny village of North Pole, Alaska, one family discovered that year that Christmas wishes really can come true. Good, Ashley, you're doing so good. You're doing good. We got a special Christmas gift that year. That we got our daughter's life. She just fills the room with with love. When you're around her, you just automatically love Ashley. <laughs> If she was a here, I just, it would break my heart not to have her with us now. I, I can't picture my life without Ashley. Ah, yeah. We still go out sledding. She still likes to. Uh, she still yells her commands at the dogs after I do. But she's always quick to remind me to anchor the sled before she gets in the basket. I like to go with my dogs and with my daddy. For more full rescue 911 videos and more TV show streams, hit the big red button and subscribe. Peace out, YouTube.